we're almost there. Corrosion issues in the grounding wires and other connections are proven to be the problem. All right. Let that battery charge up a little bit more. You can plainly see this is a four cylinder, right? One, two, three, four spark plugs. And we're gonna check each one of the spark plugs. And then we're gonna inspect the uh, cylinders. And then we're gonna check for compression. The stuff that really eats up your budget is when you have to buy lubricants and all the little extras a system like this needs to keep maintained. And most of the stuff that I've had laying around has been laying around for years, and so it was really time to, you know, rebuy a bunch of this stuff. And I wanted a smaller grease gun. I'm tired of using the big one. I like the little cute one. Anyway, that's 150 bucks worth of crap. These guys cleaned up pretty nice. Not bad at all. I think we'll probably be able to reuse them. They don't have many miles on them. All points indicate to a very low hour motor. All right, my compression tester's hooked up. We're in cylinder one, going from the top, one, two, three, four. What about 121 or so? Contact. Cylinder number two. Stand clear. Maybe I needed to run the others for a few more cycles. We'll double check those. Look out now. Yeah, that's what it is. I want a 38. Crank it. Battery's starting to get low. So it's about 136. Hold on to your butts. 35, 135. 138, 136, 135, and 150. As long as they're all within 20 of each other, right? And that's like on an average. So it can't be number one's 20 off. Two's 20 less, three's 20 less than that, four's 20 less than that, you can't do that. They've all gotta be within 20 of each other. Like if, if one cylinder is higher, it might be fouled up with some carbon. And with these motors and you put garbage fuel in them, yeah, they get carbon fouled. And that will tend to raise the compression a little bit. Contact. 143. I think I need to lube up those cylinders a little bit. Well, 12 years. That might be dry as a bone in there, and who knows what kind of readings I'll be getting. I'm going to pull all the plugs, put a little bit of oil in each one, and then I'm going to let it turn over a few times just to move that oil around a little bit, and then I'll let it set. I neglected to get myself a funnel, so I'm using the cap from the uh, lower unit oil. It's got a little funnel built on it. Put about a teaspoon of oil in there, and then I'm going to drop it right in this cylinder. See, I got it in the... Number two, let's get number one. That little teaspoon of oil goes down on the cylinder. That is so much smoother now. You're right, that's 149. Still within specs, I mean it's within. All right, so this model force, the later models, the top and bottom cylinders were rated for like 145 and the two middle cylinders were rated for 155. So <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that number three there, hitting at 165, I might have put a little bit extra oil in that one, bringing the compression up. But uh, next thing we're gonna do is check for spark, swap out the impeller, change out the lower fluid, and uh, we're gonna see if we can get this bad boy to start, run for a while, then we'll recheck the compression again and make sure everything's good. Not bad, not bad so far. The numbers are all good. Steven Nichols out of Cypress, Texas, sent me these photos. He took on about the exact same project, same boat. Him and his family are now having a great time on it, and the reason why he was successful is because he's a subscriber to the channel, and the spirit of the fat guy flows through him like the force flows through a Jedi. So sub to the channel, you might get something out of it. Believe it or not, the 120 Force, this is a 1996 model. It's a good motor. Force has a bad reputation for several factors. It's an older style motor. Maybe we start at the beginning, huh? The Force was originally made by some obscure company. I can't remember what the name of it is. Chrysler started making them. And then at some point in the 80s, I believe, Brunswick bought the licensing to it. Since Brunswick owned Mercury, they started having Mercury make the Force motors. And I think from the shaft on down, it's just like any other Mercury motor. The problems that these motors have are more with the fuel. These forced motors were never evolved with the times. So as we started switching over to ethanol fuels, ethanol fuels degrade 
quickly. An old ethanol fuel does not run very well in these things at all. Top that off, they decided not to evolve the brand so that it would keep up with modern day EPA specs. And so I think the last force motors rolled off the line in 1999. Pretty sure that's right. People that buy them today used, of course, put ethanol fuel in them and leave fuel in the tank and they just get fouled up quickly. So as far as I know, this is the same lower unit as like a Mercury 115 and there's a little bolt hidden under here. The newer models of this engine are easier to take apart because you don't have to disconnect the uh, shift link in general, think. Oh, that did it. All right, take this nut off. It's gonna be heavy. Yeah, so we should slide straight. Now we gotta get the whole drive shaft out. All right, pull that trim up a little bit. Good. All right, in the center of your screen there, at the base of that shaft, right where it meets the lower unit, is the housing for the water pump. In case you didn't know, on a 1996 Force 120, you can replace the lower unit fluid with pure Corona. It runs just fine. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that was chunky. Ooh. And that right there is your impeller inside the water pump housing. Anything that's been sitting 12 years, it's made out of rubber like that, just swap it out, man. It's save you a heartache later. Just like on a lot of boats, there's a little like Woodruff key that fits here, all right, that stops that impeller from spinning around on its axis. And then I've got my bottom plate. I got a new gasket, because if you're gonna replace the impeller, replace the gasket. Old impeller is form-fitted to the water pump housing. New impeller is going to have to be crammed in there, but in the same orientation. I like to get a little dish soap and smear it around in there. Slick it up a little bit so it's easier to get the impeller in and move the fins around to the orientation that you want them to be. See on my phone there, I took a picture to make sure that I didn't forget what the orientation of the fins are inside the water pump with the impeller there. Just stops me from doing something stupid like putting it in backwards or whatever. Just kind of mash a new impeller in there and you're good to go. Inside the new impeller there is a groove. The key from the shaft fits down inside. And there we have it all buttoned up again. Now we just got to put it back together and I'll drain the lower unit oil while it's on the motor. All right, let's put this sucker back together, huh? Only a one man operation around here. All right, I have changed my angle of attack. And I took the spark plugs out too, so it's easier to spin that flywheel and get the proper orientation. There it is. Oh. <laughs> Success. Yes. My hands are too big for this job. If you want to be a mechanic and you have big hands, Find something else to do. And I'm not a mechanic for that very reason. And of course, as soon as I get everything set up, it's starting to rain again. But let's see if it starts. We've got gas, fresh gas, oil, everything we need. Put this sucker in neutral. Battery. Always the battery, it's always something. All right, that's pretty good. Let's get some water on it. I like that. Earmuffs are not the foolproof way to go, but I'm just trying to get this thing running without burning the impeller up. Earmuffs pressurize it, so it doesn't really give you an accurate depiction of whether your water pump is working properly or not. Best way to go is a barrel of water. Come on, baby. I'm thinking we're gonna have a carburetor problem here, folks. The starter doesn't want to disengage either. Looks like I'm gonna have to either clean or rebuild those carburetors. So I'm out of time for the week. But just remember one thing. Even if your kids don't call you on your birthday, fat guy loves you, pal. See you next time.